This integral may seem a bit wild, but we're about to tame it using a substitution that may seem strange at first. It may seem strange to you at first, but it is, it is going to work out beautifully. Believe me, it'll turn out great. So just trust me with this. You take the uh, 2 to the x minus 1 term here, and you're going to sub it equal to not just some variable u, and not even just the tangent of the variable u, but rather the square of the tangent of the variable u, where u is a real variable between 0 and pi by 2 radians. Now, it would be more useful to express x more explicitly in terms of u. So I can take the 1 to the other side and I'll have tan square of u plus 1. And we know what tan square plus u is, plus 1 is, right? So tan square plus 1 equals secant square. So we're going to get secant square of u equal to 2 to the x. And using natural logarithms, we can say that x equals the natural log of secant square of u divided by the natural log of 2. And we can, of course, use a property of logarithms by which the 2 can be written as a coefficient of the uh, logarithm term rather than an exponent of its argument. And for the differentials, we could just use this expression that we've uh, used for our substitution. So taking differentials, we get 2 to the x times the natural log of 2 dx equal to, using the power rule, we have 2 times tangent u. And using the chain rule, we of course have secant square u du, which implies that dx equals 2 times tangent u times secant squared u du divided by the natural log of 2 times this 2 to the x term, which can be written as a, we're making use of this expression here. So we can write 2 to the x as 2 to the x minus 1, provided that we add back a 1 as well. So 2 to the x minus 1 is just tangent square u, right? So that's going to be 2 times tangent of u times the secant square u du divided by the natural log of 2. And if this is tan squared, and if I add a plus 1 to it, I'm going to get secant square u, which cancels out in the numerator and denominator. Hence, dx is going to be equal to 2 times the tangent of x divided by natural log of 2 du. And of course, we have to figure out the or uh, find the new limits of integration as well. So the old limits were x equal to 0 and x approaching positive infinity, right? And our substitution was 2 to the x minus 1 equal tangent square of u. Uh, so if x equals 0, that means 2 to the x is uh, 2 to the 0, which is 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0, which implies that u should be equal to 0 as well. And we see that x approaches positive infinity. 2 to the x minus 1 will also approach positive infinity, which implies that u should approach pi by 2. So yeah, our domain will work just fine for the limits of integration. So our integral that I'm going to name as i is the integral from 0 to pi by 2. Up here we had an x minus 1 term, right? And x was, if I remember correctly, and I don't want to take any risks, uh, x was, yeah, all the stuff in red, 2 times the natural, uh, natural log of secant u divided by the natural log of 2. So twice the natural log of secant u divided by the natural log of 2 minus 1 because we had an x minus 1. And in the denominator, we had that square root of uh, the square root of 2, x minus, 2, to the, 2 to the x minus 1, which is just going to turn out to a tangent of u. And uh, we had the natural log of this argument as well. So that was just a tangent square u. And once again, we can make use of the properties of natural logarithms to write the uh, 2 over here as a coefficient. And of course, for the, for the uh, differential element, we have 2 times the tangent of x divided by the natural log of 2 du. Oh, this was, we're in the u world now. We're not in the x world anymore. Sorry about that. Next up, we have some simplifying to do, like these terms over here canceling out, and we can uh, do some simplification in the uh, numerator as well. So we're going to get the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of 2 times the natural log of, oh, sorry about that, the natural log of secant u minus the natural log of 2 and it was divided by the natural log of 2, so you can just take that out as a constant multiple. Uh, 
and you have another uh, reciprocal of natural log of 2 as a constant multiple as well so we're, we're gonna need two of them out here so squaring that and that's the numerator sorted out and down here we have the natural log of the tangent of u so that's your integral i in the u world and how does this make things any better in comparison to back when we started well we could make use of a very useful property of the definite integral that if you have the definite integral from 0 to a of some function f of x with respect to x you can replace the x with an a minus x term and the uh, different and the uh, results of integration will not change so you can replace all the x's by a minus x, a being the upper limit of integration, and the results of integration will not change. So that means, that means that if I take my integral i, and I replace all the u's by pi minus 2 minus u's, then what's going to happen is that the uh, trigonometric ratios, the trig ratios, are going to be converted into their responding, their corresponding co-ratios. So i is going to be equal to 1 by the square of the natural log of 2 and we're integrating from 0 to pi by 2 and once we perform this uh, substitution of, sh of sorts, once we perform this substitution of, of sorts, what, what's going to happen is that we have 2 times the natural log of secant turning into a cosecant, so we have cosecant of u, minus the natural log of 2, and we're dividing by the natural log of the cotangent of u. So that is the other way to express the integral. So now you have two representations of the same integral, one in red and one in purple. And what am I going to do with them? Well, I'm going to just add them up. Yeah, simple as that. I'll add i and i in each representation. So if we add up these two integrals, then I'm going to have to add up the uh, functions that we're integrating, right? So I'm just going to add up the uh, purple and the red stuff together. So I'm going to get 2 times the natural log of secant u minus the natural log of 2 and almost forgot the 1 by natural log of 2 squared outside. Can't forget that. Can't forget that. Uh, divided by the natural log of tangent of u plus 2 times the natural log of cosecant u minus the natural log of 2 divided by the natural log of cotangent of u. And we're integrating with respect to u, of course. Okay, that's all fine, but now what? Well, I'm going to make use of yet another property of, uh, well, I'm going to make use of properties of both trig functions and the natural logarithm. Like, I have a secant here, right? I have the secant of x here, uh, secant of u here. So I could write this as the uh, natural log of the reciprocal of the cosine of u. And we know that reciprocals, you can flip the argument into a cosine, provided that, that you add a negative sign outside. So instead of writing the natural log of secant, I'm going to write this as the negative of twice the natural log of the, cos of the cosine of u, minus the natural log of 2, of course, divided by the natural log of tangent of u. And over here, I'm going to perform the same trick, but using the, uh, the fact that the cosecant function is the reciprocal of the sine function. So I have a negative 2 times the natural log of sine of u minus the natural log of 2 divided by, now the cotangent is just the reciprocal of the tangent function, correct? So now I have some similarity between the two terms inside the integral. So I'm going to have 1 by the natural log of 2 squared outside as a constant. And out here I had 2 times i. So 2 times i equals this times the integral from 0 to pi by 2. Of Now you have exactly the same uh, denominator provided that you take a negative 1 common. You could take a negative 1 common in uh, uh, you, you could take a negative one common between the numerator and the denominator of the second term in the integral. And that will yield a uh, negative 2 times the natural log of cosine u minus the natural log of 2 
plus the twice the natural log of sine u um, plus the natural log of 2 divided by the natural log of the tangent of u. So what's going to happen is that the natural log of 2s just cancel out. You can take this uh, 2 outside uh, as a common multiple. Oh, can't let go of the negative sign there. So if you take the 2 outside as a common multiple, it cancels with the 2 on the left. And you have i equal to the reciprocal of the square of natural log of 2 times uh, the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the natural log of sine of u minus the natural log of the cosine of u. And it's all coming together very nicely, isn't it? And once again, we can make use of the properties of the natural logarithm. That if two terms are being subtracted with individual logarithms, we can combine them into a single logarithm where uh, they're being divided. So the natural log of sine of u divided by the, the cosine of u is just the tangent of u, which is the same term as the denominator. Okay, cool. So you cancel these things out. You're left with just pi by 2 divided uh, pi by 2 times the natural log of 2 squared, and that is the value of your integral. So that was a very cool substitution that turned out really, really well. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. See you next time.